So friends, welcome back in second session of the Advanced Certificate in Power Distribution Management Program. We are discussing about the overview of distribution business and information technology. Now I would request Mr. R. Thup to discuss further on this topic. Welcome back all the students as well as practicing distribution managers. Now continuing further with the IT infrastructure, what is to be or should be available, I come back to the subdivisions. They should have a data acquisition server fitted with front end processor for data acquisition from distribution transformers, HT consumer meters for AMR at predefined intervals. All offices should have a LAN connected to switches and routers for upward connectivity to data center. Then what infrastructure at call center it should be? It should be directly connected to the data center for online user services. Call center should have IV RS server, interacted voice response system server for operator free customer interaction. Customer service printed at call center can address all types of customer query complaint due to online connection to utilities operational data. Call center has to be equipped with CTI, ACD, IV ray servers, IP telephone, etc. If required, utility can have single call center for multiple towns. Call center should also have a facility for cash collection, check collection through kiosks, intelligent display management, touch screen kiosks should be available for duplicate bills, manual cash collection counters for visiting customers in case they want to pay in cash. At the infrastructure at substation and DTs it should be that all substations should have a data logger PC which will collect all substation meter data through RS485 port connected in the mod bus fashion for the meters through RS485 238 data converter units. The data logger data to be transmitted to data acquisition server at subdivision over GSM, CDMA, PSTN lines. Data logger at substation will have on screen display of substations, single line diagrams, energy balance, losses, bus bar, transformers, both instantaneous and aggregate value. Moreover, data logger will display voltage, current and demand, both maximum demand and minimum demand. DTs and selected ST consumers of mixed feeder shall have meters with RS232 port and data acquisition server at subdivision will pull meter data at regular intervals as per the requirement of the utility through GSM CDMA modems. Retrofitted on the meter RS232 ports or optical port itself. All subdivision servers shall push the entire incremental meter data to data center running off peak hours for aggregation and MIS generation as per requirement of various hierarchical units of the utility. Now basically what we are saying is the, but the government of India is suggesting is that they should, the application packages should be broken into three parts. Now part A should essentially consist of and these application packages they are they are proceeding in preparation of the system requirement specifications for each of these uh, parts and first is the modules essentially required for most of the utilities which they do not possess the IT enabled systems like GIS based customer indexing, asset mapping, network analysis, meter data acquisition system, energy audit, customer care center, new connection, disc, uh, disconnections, dismantling and MIS systems. Part view is metering, billing and collection packages and other stand, uh, standalone software solutions. If they are in place, the utility should integrate the same, the existing MBC system so, uh, to the part A module. In case they are not able to do it or if they so want that is too outdated, they can have a new one. And part C for a later date for asset management and maintenance management modules. Now basic infrastructure what a data center needs, what the utility has to consider and provide for the IT enabling of the and provision of a data center is approximately 500 square meters of the area which is air conditioned through precision air conditioning and ventilation systems, firefighting, access control systems, internal and extra, external electrification of data center building as per requirement, then disaster recovery and business continuity plans of the utility, then supply of meters and development of web portal by the utility. The software architecture, what is being suggested it should be web based and shall be accessible through connectionless web browsers. 
the application should be capable of running in a hybrid network connectivity environment that is MPLS VPN based secured WAN tunnel. It shall support interoperability, multiple operating systems and multiple databases. Application architecture should be highly granular and loosely coupled. They should have unified access framework for people, process and information through integration of back-end applications with single sign-on feature role based, request based and hybrid user type. Now interfaces between separate systems shall be message based. Integration technology must be industry proven, standard scalable and shall provide for extensive functionality. Web based message oriented middleware and object or request broker middleware technology shall be preferred for integration of desperate applications and databases with entire architectures. It shall be possible to set various options and logics of the system from a central location to ease the system administration work. Then GIS based customer and asset indexing and mapping. Now a GIS based since there is a separate session into it which my colleague Mr. Rudra will be giving it so I am just skipping this GIS based because it will be extensively covered. Now along with the IT imp implementation following needs to be carried out by utility. Business process re-engineering to suit electronic workflow and initiate necessary change management creating atmosphere in the organization for adopting information technology and capacity building of employees at each of the levels, empowering employees to take necessary administrative measures to reduce losses, and systematic roadmap for IT interventions is information technology, communication and network, IT security, disaster management, business continuity, automation, and process re-engineering. Now what should be the plan for the implementation? After defining the business priorities of the utility, entire implementation need to be based on well articled business and IT strategy plan. The utility should have a holistic view of to create synergy between business and information technology. Emphasis shall be on adopting standardization of the following IT areas for easy and efficient deployment, integration and maintenance, which is essentially architecture, application, network, hardware, IT management. And organization should have a definite plan for business process re-engineering, change management and realigning responsibilities and authorities in an IT enabled structure with a top management commitment to push this and step by step implementation. Yeah, there is a caller from Mumbai. Yes, Mumbai, please ask your question. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. I would like to know. Uh, yes, good morning. Please ask your how question. How can we pick up the, uh, data from the meter itself in this new IT scenario? Uh, your question is how we can pick up the meter data. Meter data meters okay. are recent downloadable meters are fitted with either optical port or RS-232 or 485 port. If it is only optical port meter, then you have to collect the meter data through MRI instrument, meter reading instrument. And if it is having a RS-232 port, then the meter data can be downloaded using modem to a remote computer. Next. Now, step by step implementing capacity building and competency building. In the business process engineering, what we mean by it? We have legacy systems inherited from British through elaborate but suitable for centralized manual ledger based record keeping in paper form. Now, any information on revenue energy system stores has to be mined into huge records and hence business is being run mainly on judgment of individuals who have become islands and control centers of information. For IT enabling, business process needs to be standardized and made IT worthy so that all departments are working simultaneously in their area but on a common database. Common means it's on the same database. For IT to succeed, 
traditional system administrative powers need to be relooked for example practice of manual meter reading to be dispensed with adoption of automatic meter reading and appropriate table call management new connections storage management bill modification etc needs to be changed the organization administrative hierarchy delegation and other interface areas with customer etc needs to be relooked into any project or change involves a time period for smooth migration or change to new system provision of transient support and seamless travel needs to be contemplated and provided what we understand by change management for large scale it implementations bring about a change in the way of working of the employees the organizations the way they are measured and deliver service to the consumer consumers firstly a fundamental change in mindset is required for it implementation to succeed a well designed and well implemented system will give managers the information they need to take good business decision using the data people at all all levels would have access to good robust integrated information to enable them to provide better service to the consumer but they need to be aligned to use the data for decision making sustained leadership commitment it has to provide through the entire period of implementation and change and commitment for creation of high performance organizations organization should be able to attract and retain the best of it as well as managerial talent to manage and take forward this transition basically we know human by nature is averse to changes because he sits in a cocoon of a comfort level so any change brings additional effort to make it acceptable there has to be proper dissemination of information with clearly defined objectives and benefits to be communicated to all wherever it enablement has succeeded the same is possible only with commitment of top management and involvement of all for example it in indian banking telecommunication systems etc how do we capacity build the hr resource existing with this basically what we have seen is we have been working in the hardware in the network and we have not seen much technological changes in the last two decades distribution engineers need to be exposed to the it the expansions and mostly taken place in radial mode instead of ring duplication alternate route of supply which posed limitation to adopt automation such as scada in majority of our towns it reminds me our friend at the lucknow will be waiting for the scada response to his question so scada that is supervisory control and distribution automation function i'll request mr rudra to respond to his query so your query was question was that what data scada is acquiring scada is normally acquiring the instantaneous data of voltage current and power this is the major function of scada and the scada second function of scada is supervisory control means from a one common central control station all the substations of the utility can be controlled by scada your third question was that who owns the communication network the communication network is basically is the what type of communication network you require it, it is for scada there can be a hybrid network it can can be microwave if it is a microwave link or radio link then utility has to own the network but in case of optical fiber network which is nowadays commonly available for hire that utility may for the cost purpose may considering hiring of optical network but for scada you require a dedicated communication channel so utility has to basically decide what type of communication channel they will prefer to take so mr rudra has explained the queries it was asked by the ilabad caller okay now i will i will request now competency building for the human resource it alone cannot improve the distribution business performance so basically emphasis should be on building competencies skills and shaping the mindsets of the individuals processes have to shift to the world class processes people to be reskilled not only for initiating but for sustaining the transition what is expected from information technology distribution 
foresee the reliable electricity for all. Prior notice of load shedding, correct information when somebody calls the customer, uh, customer care center. Easy fault reporting systems. Quick and effective fault restoration and feedback. Error free billing. Easy and convenient payment options. Consumer friendly and fair addressal system and at low cost. Higher, you know, what the utility, what, what the utility will gain out of the IT enabling. It will get a higher revenue through a seamless revenue cycle management. Enterprise wide integration of processes and single point data handling. Single consolidated cus customer records across all services. Superior collaborative communications and transaction management. Faster, less expensive implementation and maintenance. Knowledge management and analysis. Now coming to the part 2 which has been the main title of the second session. That is commercial management distribution business and use of IT as an integrated solution. Basically what we are now going to take up the various business processes in the metering, billing, collection, energy audit and MIS etc. If we look at the present scenario, we have electromechanical meters earlier. Presently many of the meters are already static electronic meters. We have a manual meeting reading system. Then we have a MBC, metering billing collection. That is invoices are raised to the consumer. Consumer pays. The consumer has his query and grievances which are handled by the subdivision office. And they are plowed back to the MBC after consumer undergoes and feels that he has been harassed. And management is getting the information through the subdivision office itself. So he is virtually running the office. The fellow is sitting in the subdivision office is controlling the entire thing. Now if we have to increase the revenue, then what and how do we go about it? And what are the factors which the which will be contributing factors for organization wide. Now, firstly, it can be done to better customer care and by improving the quality of the supply. What we need to is enrollment of all consumers, validate it, validate them, credit assessment, connection and all customer contracts for each of the categories should be available then it should be settled through energy input verification, reconciliations and theft control need to be checked. Then metering for better customer relation management, it should be through a data acquisition systems. Unbuilt and no unbuilt uh, consumption should be allowed. Fraud should be detected. Reconciliations should be done. Wherever meter has not been that assessment estimation should be done on the past consumption pattern and billing should be done correctly as per the tariff category, applicable rates, invoiced, bills raised, reconciled. This will lead to better collections. And how this will happen is to optimize the things, staff reduction in this area, new system implementations, there should be open access, unbundling, security, with proper security and controls. If we look at what are the bleed points in my revenue cycle, now the cross, the red ones, the brown ones, the circles, these are the bleed points. Now what we are depicting is the business process, which says the revenue process is new customer comes, gets registered, connection provided, his load assessed, meter read, then customer account is matched in the records, Tariff as per the category is interpreted and applied, bill generated. Yes, Mumbai, please ask your question. Hello, ma'am. Uh, my uh, first question is uh, what would be the communication channel between meter and data acquisition center? And uh, my second question is uh, what would be the likely format for the uh, this ACPDM uh, question paper? 
we can't disclose the um, the format of the question paper but it will uh, definitely it would cover all type of questions short questions and the uh, uh, long questions and uh, multiple choice questions so this, uh, this uh, we can't disclose this thing the question paper will be of 100 marks and all types of questions would be covered in this so uh, now i would request to pick up the uh, first question regarding uh, regarding the data communication if you are having a data communication server the metered data shall be collected through GSM or CDMA or PSTN modem. Now question comes that your question is how the different type of metered data can be taken in one data server that is a big issue nowadays it is a issue of interoperability. Uh, that is a long issue it is <laughs> we cannot discuss it now. No, how they first, uh, I think what we, we have to tell is from the d the meter, the data comes to the substations, even for the AMR meter, it comes to the uh, substations, as Mr. Rudra has explained, through the modems, which could be CDMA, GSM, wherever optical link is available and provided for through the optical links, it is brought to the substations. From the substations, which are connected to the data center through the PSTN, MPLNS, VPN network, it will be brought to the data center. Now what Mr. Rudra has further explained is how the different makes of the meters with the different protocols we are going to interpret the data on a common database how we bring it out. So there the interoperability issues are existing which have been partly sorted out and which will be sorted out whenever there is a technology provided solution provider in between. Thank you. Now coming, now what are the causes of the revenue leakage? We have basically we can divide into cultural causes, proximate causes and temporal causes. And we look at the cultural causes, we have a silo mentality that is we don't think beyond our defined role. Its exceptions are complex and control mindset which is basically dependence on audit to correct. Then extreme cultures that is aggressive to analysis. Other priorities, non-revenue role eats up our most of the time in the utility. Then hiring freezes, no staff addition despite attrition and more work and we try to defend and depend upon the blame game. Now revenue leakage by the people is through replicating errors, interpretation errors by mistakes. Now in the process there are many approvals are involved and hence delays are caused. Many systems in the technology are being used or they are not adequate. Now what is the limitation of our existing meeting system? If we see initially in the early after the independence every connection was provided with the meter. Sometime in 1977 we introduced the flat rate for the agriculture and thereafter we today have mostly the agriculture on different systems of the billing without any metering. And many of our meters are dead stop at consumer ends. CT ratios are not correct at the high end units. So CT ratio errors are also causing a bleed of the revenue. Meter reading errors due to manual system of reading. So most important is no mechanism for monitoring and accounting of energy. Hence above problems leading to revenue loss of utility remains unchecked. Basically because we are not able to fix the account uh, responsibility and account for the energy that is being supplied to a particular unit area. Now metering module, how it will help us? Now the metering module in the IT enabled environment will help us enables accurate metering and tapping revenue loss through exception reports. It will interface for automatic online offline meter reading devices. It will enable us to capture meter reading data from meter reading book that is handheld, computer or meter reading instrument for uploading and downloading the data. No human element involved. System should be capable and download the data for a given set or group of consumer automatically. The system will generate meter reading schedules. The system will generate exceptions and alert in case of overdue meter readings or any faulty meter reading or when compared to the past historical data available in the system. 
The system will provide us the validation checks to minimize data entry errors and incorporate logics to check variations in consumption and generate exceptions. It will issue work order for checking and replacement if meter reading found low, unacceptable based on earlier trends. Work orders to be closed with valid reason else escalate the issue till its re resolution. The meter module will capture complete meter history in the life cycle starting from arrival in stores to type, make, batch, model, catalog number, place of installation, calibration, recalibration, testing records till the meter is scrapped or destroyed. System will identify meters for mass replacement for scheduled testing and generate a work order for the same. It will monitor and track the following meter readers performance. Comparison of input versus consumption, variance of consumption for consumers, current location of the meter, whether it's lying in stores under testing or at consumer practice, premises sorry, current status of meter, correct meter, stuck up meter, slow meter, door lock etc. Now what are the limitation of the existing billing systems? Humor intervention at many places in the process which leads to the scope for manipulation, billing errors and higher percentage of estimated billing. Electronic meters are installed in many customer premises but readings are taken manually. Even if reading is taken through MRI, output is printed and data entered in manually. Appropriate billing engine is not available to take directly to da data directly from MRI for bill calculation. In many places, bills are calculated manually. We have longer cycle time for reading, billing and collection due to lack of process automation. We give very less time for consumer to pay. Update of payment information is delayed and receivable reports takes a long time. Poor tracking of receivables due to manual systems. Restricted reporting and analysis capabilities due to manual systems. Lack of information roll up for decision making levels. Now billing module what it will do? It will enable us to raise bills efficiently, timely and accurately for reducing the outstandings to the utility. Bills will be generated as per predefined billing logic, as per category, fixed charges, consumed energy, demand, taxes, etc. It should be flexible to revise the logic centrally from time to time depending upon the modification in regulations, tariffs, etc from one place within the utility, system to generate bills for any special scheme launched and calculate other dues. That is, the system is totally flexible. System to define and modify the logic for fine penalty calculate different types of areas as per the prevailing norms. It will provide credit on account of any prepayment, excess payment, etc. It will generate the estimate billing in case the meter is not being read or premises locked. System will have a list of standard reasons for estimated billing, then flexibility of defining the periodicity in the bill processing yearly for or half yearly for agriculture consumers. It will identify the tampered data or faulty meters and it will generate the flags for operator intimation. It will automatically generate barcode and print it on the bill so the bill collection becomes easier. Downloading facility of billing logic to CMR handheld computer as and when required, provision of generating duplicates on demand from the customer, system to dispatch the generated bill electronically to customer if required and module can close ledger monthly and generate assessment and realization report. Even when the web enabled system it can if required it can be done on the daily collection or daily basis itself which otherwise has been taking lot of time for the reconciliation. Now we have a spot billing system. Basically, it's nothing I just cover. It's a hand and computer or a microprocessor. It, it can be used in two technology variants. I'll just uh, two technology variants and both the technology gives us the, a faster response, intelligent. It reduces the process cycle time, cost, no human errors and reduce complaints. Each this machine cost around 20,000 of rupees and covers around 2000 customers and generally payback time of this to payback for this is two to three years. So here since no human error we have a satisfied consumer better revenue collection 
accurate billing, transparencies, and reduction in customer complaints. Basically, the, it is a full-fledged handheld computer, hardware, and software which is customizable. It has about four, uh, 64 MB of the storage space. It can be in a, any of the Indian languages or English. It is user-friendly. It is able to, if we have a small printer attached to it, it will be able to generate receipts and bills there and then at the site of the reading in the field. It has a built-in smart card to make it secure. Many modes of data exchange with PC and meters, USB, serial ports, infrared ports, Bluetooth port, 232 port, etc. It can send and receive data over internet with a phone line. Now, technology one is a simple billing engine when reading is fed into it one and process generate and prints the bill at consumer premises itself. Now, here before I take, uh, proceed to the field for taking a meter, I download for a set of consumer for which I have to read today the data into the machine. Based on the previous data, I am able to raise the bill. And the second technology, here I don't know, uh, download the data, but I have a GPS connectivity of this computer to my master data center where when I take, I feed the current reading into it, the earlier stored reading is there and then fed back to the computer through a bi-directional communication medium and it generates a bill and it prints the bill thereafter in the consumer premises. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages of the technology one? I have to manually go to a location, download the data. So there is, it is dependent upon the communication link with the central computer. Now, the li limitation is only those consumers for which I downloaded the data in the morning, only I can raise and read the bill, raise the bills. Now, adv advantages, bills of all consumers can be generated and there is no need for regular data uploads for the technology too. It is totally dependent upon the reliability and speed of the communication link between the computer and the central computer. Now coming to the, after having covered metering and billing, now we are coming to the collection module in an IT enabled uh, environment. This collection module, the software uh, allows us different payment channels which will improve upon customer convenience for payments and enable shorter metering billing collection cycles. System is to handle centralized or decentralized payment processing but centralized reconciliation of the collection. Capture all payments with login ID of receiving personal and collection center codes. All collections to be made against specific bills to enable reconciliation. Any collection without bill shall be mandated with specific reason from the predefined reason codes embedded in the system. All collections are classified against standard codes of payment specified by the utility. System generates a receipt with a unique number for each of the collections. It enables systems to receive payments in different modes, check, bank draft, credit card, debit card, cash, internet or directly debit from the bank to the ECS mandated. In certain cases, advanced payments also can be accepted without bill also. A single check, a payment can be made for multiple bill through a single check and system to generate daily reconciliation of the cash collected and also on bank remittance returns to be reconciled with the bank statements. It is totally flexible to accept full part payment or advance payments. The payments shall be on, on hold in case communication link failure and system to record all such transactions for future updating of database. In cases, special collection drives, collection by spot billing, etc. Collections are made in the field and received issued there and then. So each special drives also, it is possible to collect the bill without uh, going into specific details. Now, next is the new connection module of the business process. The system cover activities from issue of application to new connection confirmation, temporary connection, load connection, 
extension, reduction, name change, meter shifting, etc. It enables to generate and issue different application forms for different categories of consumers and available across all delivery channels, any of the offices, customer care centers, web, etc. System can neither accept the form over the web, the system can accept the form over the web and request to make a payment at any collection center or at any customer care center or through internet gateways after checking completeness of mandated details. System records the registration fee payment, issues a receipt. System generates a unique application number for each of the applications registered. System accepts customer details and cross check is the particular against the set of existing customers in the neighborhood. Whether the customer has defaulted earlier or not against the same premises, disconnected and rejected applications and any exception to be raised to approving authority in a much shorter time. System assesses the load based of predefined standards and validates the customer self-assessment. This module is integrated with the GIS database and GIS based network analysis module for connection for checking the network capability to sustain and provide that load whether that redundancy and the spare capacity is available at particular DT in the network on the line etc. Generation of an intimation letter about customer premise inspection and information to concerned office for premise inspection. Flexibility of bypassing the premise inspection for customer below a particular connected load. It updates the application log with status. After approval system generates a unique service connection number which is first updated in the GIS based indexing database before the issue of service order for new connection. After generation of a service order for new connection system to trigger billing modules it generates a bill inclusive of development charges security deposit and generates an intimation letter for bill amount last date of payment etc which in the today's otherwise in a not IT enabled so it takes a lot of time for a com for a customer to get the first bill in response to the service order for new connection installation the test report details to be entered into the system as confirmation now this is the next module is disconnection and dismantling model. Basically this improves the recovery and for any of the customers who has not paid it immediately raises a disconnection notice and sends to the concerned department for disconnection of a meter. System really exceptions and informs the field staff for payments made after generation of disconnection to avoid unnecessary trips to the customer premises. It provides updates on the disconnection, dismantle statement and triggering an automated deduction from security deposit of the customer. System tracks reasons for failure of disconnection and escalate the case to a higher authority in case it has not been disconnected. Ensure the availability of dismantling information to new connection approval process so that dismantle customers are not provided new connections till clearance of the old dues. On request of termination of the connection, Yes, Mumbai, please ask your question. Uh, madam, I want to ask a question regarding... Mumbai, ask your question. Please repeat your question. Regarding prepaid metal. Prepaid metal are being installed in the India Can you describe? Uh, prepaid meter is under consideration for installation at NDPL. I am not aware in maybe in the limited area they have already tried it. Now prepaid meter for installation it basically we have to first as I said for any of the IT enabling similarly what we need is administrative setup change. We have to bring in the corresponding the legislative changes also. This being a con uh, concurrent subject it has to be at the state level. Because in a in the current state, we have if say for in the case of the non-payment, I have to issue a disconnection notice prior to it. In a prepaid meter, I instantly disconnect through the remote itself. Or if I have not got a, any revenue left or the into the meter itself, then it automatically disconnects. These are some of the issues. But pre meter prepaid meter at some society levels is already existing, which are being privately run like cooperatives. At uh, Gurgaon and Baroda, I am aware of one or two societies where it is available. BSCS Bombay 
I am told as a plans to go in a big way for the prepaid metering. This is the request from all the RCs and uh, study centers. Please send the uh, attendance of the students by fax. So now uh, I request Mr. Rudy. Yeah. Now, in short, uh, on request of termination of connection, system will accept the terminating meter reading for generating the last bill. Module is to be integrated with GIS database for updating GIS database to the man to be mandatory in case dismantling of existing uh, customer. Module shall generate exception if the disconnection do not ping the tools after the disconnection within a specific period to take any legal action. Now, we have a system meter data acquisition module. Now, module employs a process supported by technology to monitor and record all the electricity transactions with reduced meter reading cycle, timely delivery of bills and timely connection of payment. The data acquisition software will read remotely various makes of meters provided at substation DT and ST consumers by using any of the communication links which we have discussed in the question and answer session. And I have already said the system meter data acquisition and the substations are having RS-485 ports which are connected to a mod bus and each of the DT and the AMR meters at the HT consumer premises are having RS-232 ports. But system will require data from various make of meters remotely online and will tra transmit the same to central station through a suitable modem. So the, this will enable, our, enable us the captured data on the meter for billing as well as energy auditing and accounting. It enables performance monitoring of assets and customers. What benefits accrue out of it that real time as well as time stamp data acquisition for meters. Supervisory function that is processing, monitoring and analysis and diagnostics. Data exchange and storage facility. User defined report generation for calculation of feeder, DT performance, statistics, energy balancing etc support for load forecasting and system planning on short, medium and long term basis besides identifying overloaded transformers. Now coming to the present energy accounting system. See today if we refer to this chart what we have we have a consumer record and we have a substation wise data available. The correlation what we are saying is not possible with subdivision, division and manually recorded feeder wise data for consumer records, collections, energy flows and energy accounting is generally being done on assessment basis and reports are not reliable which is given to the management and action on system expansion is also not backed by any reliable data and it is led by ad hocism. So uh, I would request Mr. Uh, Rudra to uh, please uh, proceed further in next session. Now this is the time to take the short break and we will be again in discussion after 15 minutes and there is announcement that the second that the next video conferencing session will be on 20th December the time will be 3.30 to 6.15. There will be three sessions. So, thank you.